So it's not how you make a mistake, it's how you recuperate from that mistake and, and you make it good. So that's my philosophy. You know, you strive for greatness, you're gonna you're gonna fall down, get up and do your best. Hello everyone and welcome to an all new Deep Cuts Live. I'm your host, Antoine Reed, and today we have another first timer, which if you've watched or listened to Deep Cuts in the past, you know I get super excited about people who are new, who have not been on here. Um, so I'm very excited to welcome Hector from Casada Cigars. Hector, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So thank you for coming on today. Like I said, you're a first timer. Uh, I was just telling you before we went live that we've not yet had anyone from Casada on, but it's a brand that I like and uh, I enjoy. So I'm looking forward, like I said, to uh, speaking with you and getting to know a little bit more about you and about Casada and all that good stuff. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, off, off, off camera, I was telling you how uh, excited I am, but always uh, nervous because, you know, I've always been kind of behind the scenes kind of person now, new role in the company. Obviously, you have to be open to these kinds of things, which which I'm excited because, you know, uh, we have amazing things at, 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 at Quesada Cigars, but always, you know, nerve wracking, especially with somebody like you and the people you <laughs> interview. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, uh, you know, like I said, Raquel is, should be next too. you know, she, I, you know she's part of the, of the company, but thank you again for having me. I do appreciate it and I'm excited and, and yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm smoking right now, uh, our Connecticut, uh, uh, Casa Magna, which I really like. And so, you know, thank you for having me again. Yeah. Like I said, thank you for coming on. Um, I want you to, you, you kind of get, gave a little bit of an intro there, but introduce yourself and tell people what role you have at Casada. Okay. So again, my name is Hector Becerra. Uh, you can say it Becerra, which that's the right way to say it. Uh, I'm the national sales manager for Quesada Cigars. Uh, and in that role, I oversee pretty much the operations in the U.S., not only from uh, the factory's point of view, where our supply, our cigars, you know, it's always handling our reps, our brokers, office, day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, and, and everything in between. So I'm kind of like the, 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 I put out fires, I create new ones, and, you know, it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity, and I'm excited because... We are a, a great company, great cigars. And so this is uh, an opportunity that Manolo and Raquel gave me. And, you know, the, the, all the people from the factory are behind it. And it's it's great, you know. So in a nutshell, that's that's my job. You know, obviously there's a little more intricate, but pretty much the, an over, overall kind of my my day-to-day -day thing. Now, last episode, um, when I was interviewing uh, someone, I started off with a question that had nothing to do with cigars and stuff and it kind of put us in a great mood to talk about <laughs> stuff. so i'm going to ask you uh okay. not a strange question but a, a question that doesn't have really anything to do with cigars as a little icebreaker but um what movie do you find yourself watching over and over again even though you've watched it like, uh, really you know what i'm gonna tell you so easy Mission Impossible. I loved all those movies, and I. <laughs> Which one? I, it's like there's like I, six of all them. Of, uh, you know, I, I I turned my I turned my 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 whatever uh, digital thing is on the TV. I don't want to name names, but I turn it on, and it, it, it's like it knows me, like it knows me, like it just it pops like, do you want to watch this again? Of course, I'm gonna watch it again, and I'm watching it, you know, over and over, and I'm like, I, I and I can tell you like the lines, and I just love all those movies. You know, I'm a big action buff, and. Um, I really like all the Mission Impossible movies. That's every you know whatever pubs in there, I'll watch it again, and I've watched them like nine, ten different times, and I don't care. I'll watch it again. So that's my, I guess my my to go movies. You know, um, it's it's kind of funny how that is, but I like them. It's funny. I just like I think last year at some point I bought all the movies, the Mission Impossible movies with Tom Cruise, and. I never got around to watching them. And I just watched the first, the first movie <laughs> maybe like two or three weeks ago. And I was watching it with my mom. And I was like, I, I, was, I told her, I was like, the first one I think is a little bit different. I was like, I think as you go along, the action gets a little bit more actioner uh, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And it gets a little bit, the first one's like very plot driven. Uh, it was a very, you know, gritty movie 
for the times, but it was like, I think late nineties or something like that. So different tone, different world and stuff like that. But um, it, it's interesting that you brought that movie up. <laughs> I think it, you know, with, with time progresses, I, uh, you know, they get better budgets and better, uh, you know, uh, effects and, 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 and locations. So I think all that, you know, uh, people are so addicted to them that, you know, that progresses where now it's like, I think the last one, I haven't seen the last, last one, but the, the one before it was in Paris and, you know, you have all the, 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 the cars, chases, BMWs, mer the motorcycles. I mean, it was just great. I, Actually, I'm gonna watch after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thank you very so, much. <laughs> so we know that you're into the action movies, you're into uh, the plots and stuff like that. So knowing that, how did you know? How did you get into sales? Um, super interesting. So I've been in sales all my life. Um, I used to do marketing, and you know. It, it's a it, uh, when you say marketing, it's a really great scope of what you do. But overall, it was a, a marketing services to businesses. And then uh, kind of retired from that. Uh, had a business, I sold it. Kind of you know uh, went off grid, and I started smoking cigars. And uh, a good friend of mine, who's a, who's a lawyer, who used to come to my house, uh, and we were sitting in the back and smoking. And he's one day he's like, you know, you should start getting into cigars. I mean, you know, you 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 have nothing else to do. And I'm like. You know what? I, I should. And I started smoking more cigars, uh, but now with a purpose of tasting them, you know, because usually when I would smoke cigars, I will be in a social area where I'm just smoking cigars and having a conversation. And really, you don't get to experience a cigar like the, the, the notes. And, you know, it's more like a social thing, you know. And then uh, so I got started getting into that and it developed into I was doing social media and I met amazing people and it, it, it kind of led me into the cigar industry. Uh, I started working for a company and I was just blown away by how the sense of community and, 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 and partnerships you build and relationships you start building with people. And that's, I think that's what it really drew me into the cigars. Uh, the cigars are amazing, right? But without the, the people factor where it's, it's nothing. So once I got into that and, and I mean, I can, I, I if you go through my phone, I have, you know, a lot of this, you know, uh, people's uh, numbers, like, you know, uh, lounge owners, uh, store owners, and I will call them periodically, like, hey, how are you doing? And it's just that sense of community. You know, you come in and you talk about life and it's not so much about the, you know, I'm going to sell you cigars. It's more about life. How's everything going? And then the second factor is the, the, the sale of the cigar. So to me, it came natural. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I talk to everyone, you know, if, if, if I'm in line at Starbucks, and I'll, I'll talk to people. Like it's it's weird. Like I'll be sitting here and I'll probably talking to a rock. I mean, it's just I talk to every you know. If you listen, I'll talk. If, if pe people you know people that know me, they'll tell you Hector. That's gonna stop talking. It's always talking. <laughs> so it, it came it came natural in in that you know how I it became with the community. It just for me it was a natural kind of progression. And and then you know uh, I left the company I was before, and I was I was questioning if I should stay in the business. I still love it. And then I met the wonderful people from Quesada and they gave me an opportunity and here we are. I mean, it was just, it's been a crazy roller coaster, right? Uh, with Quesada. I mean, uh, the cigars are just amazing. And I mean, I always talk about community and I mean, Manolo, Raquel, uh, Enrique from the factory. I mean, everybody's just so amazing. I, it's, it's my family now, you know, I can't see myself not in this industry and, and not in Quesada. Like I just, I, I re truly, believe that I'm a part of the family. Now, when you talk about the, you know, working in the scar industry, I work with a lot of salespeople and what you described is kind of like what I found, like the common thread through most salespeople is like a, the ability to just, you know, talk to anyone. Cause like I'm an introvert. So believe it or not, like I can't, you know, it takes a lot for me to jump in there in a conversation with somebody I don't know, but I think the best salespeople that I know, like you, are able to kind of jump in there um, and find that common thread, find something, uh, you know, within each person that makes them interesting. Like you said, that makes them uh, memorable and that you kind of at least start off that conversation before you get to the hard sell. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it, you have to be a, a, a people person. Like you have to be, I mean, it, cause you're talking to everyone. I mean, even, even though, uh, you know, uh, we have this joke with, 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 with my when my guys at the factory like 
I'm always, I'm always working. You know, if, if I'm off, let's say it's a Saturday and I go to my lounge, which I'm there like all the time and I'm like smoking, I'm talking about my cigars. It's just funny how, and I'm like, Hey, go and grab Hector. What are you smoking? Oh, I'm smoking this one. Go, go. Have you smoked? No, oh, well go grab it. And then I'll talk about it. And then they look, my friends are like looking at me like, really? Like, really? Can you just talk about dogs or something? And I'm like, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I'm like, man, you're married into this. I mean, if you really enjoy your, you know, what you do for a living, I don't consider myself as a job. It's it's a career, but it's always a, it's a way of life. I mean, selling cigars and smoking cigars is a way of life. I book my vacations if I can smoke cigars. If I'm gonna go eat somewhere, I have to be able to find either that place that I can smoke cigars or a place near that I can smoke a cigar. It just it just happens. Like it just you know it's the love for for the cigar. I mean, that's what it is. So how do you like? turn off sometimes like because i can imagine that being very uh like strenuous on you <laughs> to always kind of be on always be thinking about you know the sales process the the marketing process the networking and you know how do you manage to like turn off sometimes to kind of keep yourself from burning out i guess is a good question you know what it's it's sad to say that i never turn off like it's just i mean i i don't like i'll and and so uh, Enrique from you know my 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 my, my boss in the factory, um, he tells me this, and it's it's and it's it's kind of funny because he's like, hey Hector, you know if if it's Saturday and it's like twelve p.m. and I don't hear from you, I start getting worried. If it's that <laughs> Sunday by like ten a.m. and I don't hear from you, I'm like, is Hector okay? Because I'm always thinking like it's just you know, but this is to me like I said, to me is not work. To me is not burning off i mean i i am a creative person you know i used to do marketing i'm a creative person and i'm always looking for for ways to do things and find ways to bring our cigars into people and and to have these uh events or or outreach programs or something that we can do this and and to me it, it, it may be a curse but you know i that's kind of how i grew up you know I, I obviously uh i'm i'm latin and, and 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 i came from a household where my dad was always working and he only sold business and he's always thinking of ideas because he was his own boss. And, and so it kind of got transferred into myself and I'm always doing the same thing. You know, of course I, sometimes I wish I could turn it off and just sit there, but I'm watching a movie and I'm like, Hmm, should I be smoking a cigar right now? Or I'd be like, what if, Oh, I haven't talked to about my rep about this. And I'll be like, I'll send me a, a note to, so an appropriate time to send him a, a message or whatever. So, it's just funny how it is. I mean, I I don't mind. I'm I'm sure you know people around me mind because I'm always like thinking about work. But you know that's that's the that's what I chose to do in my life, and you know I think I should be able to to do it, and especially if I really enjoy it. Now, a moment ago, when you were talking about the marketing aspect and coming up with ideas, um, a question I like to ask people in your position is, you know, what is the proper way of marketing? A cigar today because i asked that because when i got into the industry in 2010 the main way was traditional kind of print media like you had your range of magazines and publications and you had to have an ad in that if you didn't have an ad then it's like you know they felt like you were giving a bad signal to the industry that you just didn't uh not that you didn't care but you didn't have the money to market yourself <laughs> why would you know a retailer want to you know bring you in if you couldn't even like you know afford an ad and you know these elaborate campaigns and you saw like, like lots of elaborate campaigns and stuff wow. i remember uh just you know i remember the switch over from a lot of companies when they were going from uh marketing just their products to marketing the lifestyle and then there was a switch i guess as things got more digital where a lot of the companies stopped the print and traditional media uh, advertising and they went to social media. Um, so for for you, like, how do you see people successfully marketing or selling a cigar today? Well, it, it's a mixture of things, you know, and, and you, you always have to always think about the demographics. You know, you have your, your older demographic, which are used to the old school media. They go and grab a magazine uh, and they start, scrolling through the magazine and they'll go to the local shop and say, Hey, here's the top five. I want to buy these. 
because they want to try them. So we have that in in a sense. That's that's the traditional way, which I still love. You know, I'm I'm a print guy, and I will always love print. But with new technologies emerging, like you know, like social media and YouTube and and everything, I think uh, smaller companies that maybe don't have the budget to spend you know a lot of money on on print media, we can take advantage of it. And the way the way we've been doing it is, is you know, a, a great example of, of of our social media presence is Raquel Quesada. I mean, she everything is social media for her, you know. And I'm and and, and a great question for her to be is like, how you turn yourself off? Because she's <laughs> always on it, you know. And she'll be, you know, and me and her have a great great working relationship where, hey, we have ideas and we do this and that, and and so a, a great example is her, you know, how we turn into our 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 cigars into a living, you know, your your how you live, how you how you go throughout life, you know, you have these accessories that you always carry, like, you know, the punch bracelets, or you have your lighters and you always carry them because you, you smoke cigars all the time. So you got to translate that into the new smokers, you know, our new, uh, uh, more social media friendly guys where everything is, uh, the living, how you live with your case and your cigar. And we cater to that. You know, if you see, if you follow us on social media and me too, and, and my social media, I always cater to that where you bring the coolness, you know, you have great cigars, but you got to have the cool lighter, the cool cutter, the case, and you go to the shop and it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to open my cool case, take out my Casa Magna cigar and light it up. And so it's, it's a way to incorporate the old, the old school, which is the print media also with social media and all, and, and all the der derivatives from like video and all that. So, you know, we have to have a balance of everything. Um, obviously, everybody wants to do print media, but you know, like you said, budgets are not sometimes created equal, and sometimes companies have a better budget than, than, for example, ourselves. But we, but I think transmitting the message through through all our resources, uh, we've been successful with that. And like I said, Raquel is a great a great uh, example of that. And you know, we we try to do things with her and you know, lives and all that kind of fun stuff. So I think that the if you don't take advantage of of that of Twitter, uh, any uh, Instagram, Facebook, it's you're you're kind of leaving some people out there, you know, who are who are maybe not print media, uh, you know, they don't want to go and buy the 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 issue, but but they they are on your Instagram. And I met a lot of great people through Instagram where they always like message me like, hey, that cigar you're smoking, I j I just went and grabbed it to the store because you were mentioning how it has this dry fruit or for example i'm a big uh uh energy drink drinker i drink them all the time and yeah that's why i never turn off and, <laughs> and and i'm drinking one right now so i have reached people have reached out to me hey man i really didn't really pair it with x y and c drink but now it's kind of a go my go-to you know you just discover something new because somebody was posting it so you know that's that's a great way to to get i guess are the message out there yeah, and like what I like about Casada and Raquel specifically is if you follow, you know, Raquel, you see her tap into, you know, as many trends and video, you know, things that are going on on TikTok and on uh, Instagram as possible. Like, you know, there was a couple, you know, with the Barbie movie, for example, you know, there was like this whole thing where, people, you know, women were posing in different outfits and different places saying, hi, Barbie. And, you know, and you would think, you know, how would someone incorporate that into the cigar world? And she did it. She was like in the factory, I wow. think, and in different places in the factory and just doing it. And she she tapped into it. And, you know, it. I think that's like I said, I think that's really good, because if you, you have to think like with social media algorithms and how can you get into someone's feed that doesn't necessarily follow you because, you know, it's so hard to to get your own followers down to see your content sometimes if they're not searching you out. Uh, so I can imagine uh, her video popping up in somebody's, you know, feed who doesn't necessarily <laughs> know what Casada is, they don't smoke cigars, but you know, they look at her and they, they go, who is this woman? And you know, like I want to smoke cigars now. <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's like, I think it's, you know, I think it's smart to, to do that. And I'll, you know, I, being in a, a position that deals with content, I always tell people it's like um, with traditional print, 
you know, it relies on people usually to read and not everyone likes to read anymore. It's really hard to get people to read, you know, anything over 300 words, which is not a really, you don't have, you know, you can't tell a, a real good story in 300 words. Um, so it's like videos, you know, even if the video doesn't say anything, like you said, holding that video uh, and holding that cigar in a video that is uh, probably goes a longer. It's almost like an advertisement. It's like a mini commercial. So, oh, yeah, um, I think you really do have to find like that balance today in between the print, as you said, that usually caters to now a much older audience and then the newer media videos and audio um, to tap into like the younger audience who's just listening to content on the go and you know things are automatically playing one after another um, it's just yeah. a different world that we're living in yeah and you have you have a chance to reach out uh, way way more people you know like I, I think uh, one time I was at the factory and we were going over uh, Raquel's videos how much how, how much exposure like how many people how many views and it was like like crazy, like a million. And I'm like, oh my God, like a million people saw this. I was like, man, I was like, mine, mine are like, you know, like 15 people. And I think my mom replays them over and over. So it's, <laughs> it's like my mom watches like 15 times. She's like, oh, I'm going to watch it 15 times just so he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't get all like hurt because nobody watches. So, I mean, the power's out there. You just have to make sure that you're doing it right. And when you, and obviously for her help, you know, so. It's a win-win for us, so we, we we love it. Yeah, and that's what you know. With, with digital media, you usually do get a lot of uh, analytics that will surprise you sometimes. Like you said, you, you, sometimes you can get a video that, even if it's something like a thousand views or five thousand views, that's usually you didn't pay anything, you know, to run that video on that platform. So that's like free exposure that you're you're getting yep. if you want to think about it like that, as opposed to how many, how much money do you have to spend to get a thousand people now to kind of see your, your ad in a magazine is, you know, sometimes it's the, the cost is just kind of astronomical to get a fraction of what you kind of can get with a video. Yeah. yeah, there is, there is a, there is a budget uh, for, for Raquel's ward, wardrobe. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I mean, I don't know if you, I mean, I obviously like people that don't know me, um, I always wear black t-shirts. That's my thing. I always. And so I, so our, my wardrobe, you know, budget is like super cheap. Hers, not so much. Me, I'm like teach black t-shirt. I'm done. I'm good. I'm good to go. Um, but that's, you know, but, but that's actually smart because if you read a lot of these business books and, you know, look at Steve jobs, for example, it's like, you, you have so many things you have to decide on in a day. Like if you can streamline your day, and you just oh, want, yeah. and you just know, like, this is my uniform. This is my outfit. I have, you know, I don't need to spend the day thinking, what am I going to wear today? Like, what, if you just have it, you can just go on. And that's like one less thing that you have to spend brain power on. So that's actually really smart. And that's something that hasn't really come up on Deep Cuts. But, you know, <laughs> you your wardrobe. Your wardrobe. Yes. Your wardrobe. Yeah. Find a uniform, wear it, and like, you know, get multiple shirts in that color or whatever that you really like and you feel comfortable in and get out the door and, and get to your day. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I can find a black t-shirt anywhere. So if like, for example, I'm going to go on a trip uh, uh, next week and it's going to be a two week trip. Uh, we're going to do some events with, with Raquel in different places. And really I'll just pack in a bunch of black t-shirts. Obviously, you know, everything clean, mm -hmm. but, but if I get to in a pickle, I'll go to target and buy a, bunch of t-shirts and i'll put them on and it, it'll be great you know like I, I don't have to be like oh this, this, is this like fashion friendly or whatever i don't care man i'll just put a black t-shirt black polo done let's go so now to kind of switch over a little bit tell us about casada because this is a brand that like i said I, it's been around forever and you know the family has been around forever so I, as a salesperson, I'm sure you have this this pitch, you know, down pat, uh, the story. So tell us the Casada <laughs> story in a nutshell um, for people who don't know it. So Casada, uh, Manolo Casada is 76 years old, right? He's been 
uh, the, 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 how it started is they, they used to be uh, trade. They used to sell uh, a tobacco leaf, right? They got into that. And then eventually, it, as, as the industry progressed for them, they started rolling their own cigars. So I, I, I wanna, I'm going to keep it super simple, I, you know, because there's I can I, we can spend two hours here talking about the history. And, and so, you know, so they be, they basically became a, a they were dealing uh, leaf and then they kind of got into the cigar rollings and then they started rolling cigars for a, a lot of people. So basically, the core is that they started with tobacco leaf. And then they they kind of progress into the the cigar making and and you know once they started that they became uh, I guess in love with with the process you know and and they have their own factory so basically our 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 company is is we have our box factory we have uh, our our tobacco we have our rollers so we pretty much do everything you know we we integrated like that and so mm-hmm. they started they started developing the cigars and and then you know they. Casa Magna. So it was 1970, the 1974, that was the cigars. And then Quesada, Quesada lines. And then I believe, and I might get this wrong, but uh, so uh, the way the uh, Casa Magna started is Manolo, I think was, he was, he was somewhere in Mexico and, and he was staying at this really nice hotel. It was the Casa Magna hotel. And, and, and it was like grandioso, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like, really nice i and i stayed uh, at some hotels in mexico they were named casa magda so they're big you know and beautiful and luxurious and so that kind of progressed into that and then in 2008 we hit cigar of the year uh with the colorado you know cigar fisher now gave us that cigar it was it was chaos and if you ever talk to anyone who's been a part of a company i wasn't a part of, of it obviously but who's been a part of a cigar of the year the company goes crazy because everybody wants a cigar now. Like everybody, you're, you're, you know, everybody's calling you like, can I have the cigar? And, it, and if you're not prepared, I mean, it's crazy. So the demand was such an amazing demand where it can't, that's where it got put in the map where people were starting knowing the cigar. And then like anything, you know, there was, there was uh, growth and, and its issues. And so it became, it became kind of, you know, a growing pains, if you want to call it that. And, you know, I guess nobody was prepared for that. And, Again, a lot of people do not know the brand because it's such a staple back in the day that it kind of lost track, you know, like like if you don't if you're not prepared for that. So when in the funny story is that when I started with Quesada, I remember I get a call from a really good broker, a friend of mine. And he's like, hey, you know, they're looking for somebody uh, and I'm from Texas. I live in Texas. They're looking for somebody in Texas uh, to take over this brand. And he tells me the name. I'm like, who? And, there, and he says Quesada. I was like, I, I, I never smoked Quesada. And I'm digging in line because I'm a geek. I start digging in line and I'm like, oh, shit. Cigar of the year 2008? Oh, wow. And I'm like, man, I need to talk to them. And then I'm looking for the cigar and I can't find it anywhere. And the closest is San Antonio for me is like two, you know, four hours away. So uh, I was in Dallas at the time. And so it, it, it kind of became where it was my obsession. You know, like, okay, now we need to bring back the, the cigars to its glory days. And not that not that it it was never in the glory days, but it was kind of forgotten because the growth is so fast. If you're not prepared for it, it it it, it will eat you. So so now we're in a an amazing time where we're bringing back the cigars, and and, and and I love to hear stories when I'm in you know when I go to one of the shops and one of the old timers come in, they're like Casa Magna. I used to smoke this ten years ago, and he's like he goes and grabs it and smokes it. He's like. Oh yeah, this is a great cigar. So that is just for me is fulfilling. And so the whole history is is like I said, I don't want to spend two hours on it, but it's like we were we were we we hit like a pinnacle with the 2008 cigar of the year, and then and then and there wasn't everybody wasn't really prepared, and it was everything was kind of going crazy, and you know we lost track. And now is our time to come back. And I don't know if you, I mean, a lot of people are paying attention now, and they're seeing our brand everywhere. You know, uh, I've been working really hard with my, with our brokers and with our reps to bring back again, the, the, this amazing cigar. And we're bringing new cigars, for example, at Connecticut. If you know anybody who knows me, I, I don't like Connecticut's. I really don't like Connecticut's. And at PCA last year, uh, we brought this Connecticut into market and I smoked a, this Connecticut all like all throughout PCA and my boss is like at the end of the day, he's like, uh, 
So I guess you, you you like the Connecticut, and I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, you smoke Connecticut all all this time, and I'm like, it's a really good Connecticut. So I'm smoking right now, right now, and I'm and I dislike Connecticut's medium body, great. You know, our weather right now is raining, nice and humid. So this is a perfect cigar. So you know, I, I, so my job it's it's becoming an obsession where to bring back again this this amazing company and and you know manolo is a great 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 blender he's a he's he knows his his stuff you know he's been doing it for all these years and why not bring it back again where he should be you know i talk to everyone in, in the industry uh and everyone tells me a great story about manolo there's not a bad story about manolo about how you know he helped someone or or he sat down with someone and explained the process and 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 told you about the leave and you know when we have our our our, our factory tours and people come in there and they leave and they're like my god manolo's such a great guy like he's humble he's like a humble human being and i love i love that about them so you know i really really enjoy uh, uh working for them and obviously you know my my number one goal is to have is to have people enjoy our cigars and and you know and and it's great because people enjoy them and and they like them so it's kind of it's kind of like a not so much easy job because you know there's a lot of cigars in the market and but you know once we get into somebody's rotation you know they they kind of stick to it so you know it's 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 great to to be able to to see that yeah my manola story is it was pro cigar I think 2019 maybe, and we, I went to the, the Casada. He did like a blending seminar or something, and on the oh, yeah. uh, one of the Casada tobacco fields, and we were in the bus, getting ready to go to lunch, and somebody asked him something about ratings, and he gave a very honest answer that I haven't heard anyone else <laughs> give about cigar ratings and stuff like that, and he was just like, you know, like when we were. You know, back in the day, like when we start seeing these ratings come out, like we had no idea what they were about. Like he and like he was like he just explained it in a way that made total sense that I've never heard anyone else explain it. Like honestly, I mean, because yeah. it's like it's like he's like we didn't understand it because you know <laughs> he, and it, he, he's like tobacco is supposed to taste like tobacco. So when he's like so you know ratings are whatever you all want it to be but you know we don't make cigars usually with these flavor notes in mind like whatever you think you you taste like is fine but it's really like tobacco like a cigar is supposed to taste like a cigar it's supposed to taste like tobacco and that's yes. always stuck with me because it's i feel like so many times especially on the media side we see so many people you know trying so hard i guess to get you know to, to be that platform that everyone wants to go to and they do all these ratings and they do these big reviews and it's like five paragraph like essays and dissertations on these cigars and <laughs> I taste like you know barnyard smells you know, aroma and an acorn you know and a little touch of like roasted this and I always think about what Manolo said and I was like because when I have a cigar I'm like I taste tobacco so I, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not good at yeah, you know yeah. I can tell you like if it stimulates the part of the tongue that's sweet or something like that, but that's not usually what they're talking about. Like I've seen people really struggle, like, like, Oh, I, this is what it, it tastes like. It tastes, you know, I, I, and I'm like, <laughs> just say like, it tastes like tobacco, like Manolo. Yeah. Like, that was my favorite yeah. Manolo story. Like I always remember him saying that and just sitting there laughing me like, it's nothing that you, you hear a lot of other people say, because I guess, you know, the, the origin story of ratings, it made complete sense to me. But um, yeah, I always tell people, so that's why I tell people after that experience, I was like, if you ever go to Pro Cigar, I say, go to the Casada, whatever. Because you're <laughs> going to get an education like you ha never have before. So Yeah, so, you know, I always get asked. So I'm sitting down and, you know, hey, Hector, what does that taste like? I'm like, premium tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but what does it taste like? Like premium tobacco, they're like, "Well, uh, do you get any raisins?" I'm like, "I'm like, no, nope. no. You get any like crackers? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, you know, like the I same know. kind. I'm like, I just smoke cigars, but, but no, you're right, you're right, and 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 you know, there's there's a uh, a thing for everyone, right? Like you know, everyone picks up 
whatever they want to. So I always, I always you know, I refer to this. And I might be right or wrong. I don't know, but this is my opinion. So sometimes, you know, you had something to eat, right? And I don't know, whatever. Let's say you went to the store and you grab a donut or a brownie or whatever. And then you sit down and smoke a cigar. And you're smoking that cigar. And what I think happens, and I'm not an expert, is that people, when you're smoking a cigar, your brain is trying to, t- to, trying to figure it out what the hell you're smoking. What what's what that flavor fits to it makes sense, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden maybe your brain picks up and says, you know what? Remember when you were like twelve and you <laughs> and you ate that uh, cracker? You know that was kind of it, 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 and it, you associate that, and and then you're like, God damn, this is that cracker when I was twelve, right? And and then and it, it just it just it's in your head. So every time you pick that that cigar, your brain goes back to that and it picks it up, and you're like, yeah, that cracker. I don't know if that's true, but you know, um, there's a couple of cigars that I smoke, and it reminds me of something, uh, 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 an event or 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 a certain thing, and and associate those cigars with that event. So, you know, I don't know, but I, I the wonderful thing about this is that you decide, you decide, you know, if you're smoking a cigar and you like it, you decide, you decide whatever whatever you want to get out of it, you know. For me, is a it, for me is a relaxation uh, c- uh, a cigar. For me, is a relaxation uh, for relax to 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 meet new people, to sit down with strangers. I met so many people, amazing people, sitting down, and and and, and I don't care if it tastes like nutcrackers or, or or oatmeal or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm having a great time. So I will tell people if you enjoy that cigar, have at it. You know, enjoy it, and if you get uh, Captain Crunch from it. <laughs> even better you know <laughs> well i do and I, I agree completely with that that you know i feel like we should get back to just enjoying a cigar for what it is like i was talking to someone at pca and and what what's this august so last month um and they were telling me you know sometimes they, like we get so caught up in like these reviews and stuff like that they say all i want to know is do you like the cigar like Yes or no. <laughs> and then would you buy it again? Because that's important right. to me to know, like, yes or no. Like, I don't you know, like you can have as much fun as you want to with trying to figure out the flavor notes and all the stuff and aroma. But I always want to know, do you like the cigar? And then, like, would you rebuy it? Like, those are the two questions that are most important to me as a brand owner who's right. sitting here spending money to make the cigars. So I always think about that, too, is like I feel like it'd be nice if we can get back to. I guess this idea of just enjoying a cigar, like this is a great cigar, you know, and maybe give your reasons for liking it, but it doesn't necessarily need to be because of, you know, these weird flavors that, uh, yeah, you know, because it's going to be unique to your palate. Cause I've been, you know, as I was, have been going through this cigar process over the years, I've been so upset when people <laughs> sometimes will say, you know, they, they describe it. You're like, Oh, this is like, sounds like a great cigar. And you smoke and you're like, I don't, I don't have any of those notes. <laughs> Like dark chocolate and like something something you're like oh like oh my gosh like this is gonna be like a great thing and then you like take you like where where are these notes at that they, they yeah, speak yeah. of <laughs> you're looking for it where's the key lime pie in this thing I'm looking exactly. for it <laughs> <laughs> you're the fruity pebbles like what's going on here <laughs> so and you can and you can find it you're like where is it and you're so I so my, my my is like okay so it burns good you know exactly. it tastes it tastes good it burns good and I'm having a great time. That's what I always say. I was like, my reviews, I've never do, I, I rarely do reviews. Um, and that's because like you, I'm like, what's the, you know, what's the construction like? Does it burn? Like, you know, do I have any problems? Do I have to relight it every five minutes? Like those are the things I'm more worried about. I'm not really worried yeah. about the flavor. Um, you know, it's, but to each their own. Um, one thing that stood that's out That's a me, great, that's a great thing about cigars. You know, that's a great thing that you can come up with whatever reason you want. You know, exactly. it's like, it's like owning a car. You, some people are truck guys, car guys, you know, motorcycle guy. You, you find your, you, you, your thing and you do it. You know, if you find a cigar that you like and, you know, smoke it and, and go and buy some more, you know, go and buy, yeah. more, my, go and buy more Casa Magna the, cigars. Some people need the, the horsepower and the this and that. And other people just want the Honda that's going to get them from <laughs> – Point A, point B, and that's completely okay. That's how I am. I'm just like I, I just wanted a car that I wasn't gonna have to put all this money into every every other month and stuff. So I was like, I, I could care less. But um, 
one thing that stood out to me, like when we spoke uh, at PCA was you're telling me how great it is to work for the company. And I know people are like, you know, what, what, what does that have to do with anything? But I think it has a, a you know, you could easily work for a comp- any company you, you want to. But it's like people who are at the top of the company really set the tone for it. And you had nothing but nice things to say about Manolo and Raquel and Enrique. So, you know, for you, like you said, you worked at different companies. Like, what is it like working for a company like this? And like, what kind of, you know, to know that they've entrusted you to kind of come into this really a family unit and yeah. and help revive this, you know, this brand and make it and maybe not revive, but make it better than it, it has been before. Well, you know, it's 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 a great honor. Like I'll tell you, like I'm, you know, uh, people who know me, I, I don't I don't sugarcoat anything. I'll I'll go straight to the point, and sometimes it lands me in trouble because I'm really straightforward. And I'll tell you this: uh, I met the first time that I met Manolo was in a Zoom call. Right off the bat, I met him, and I'm like, you know, he remind me of my dad. You know, I don't have my dad anymore. My dad passed away, and he just remind me of him how he was pretty straightforward and knowledgeable and not a guy who's gonna put you know kind of you know put sugar on the top to make you he'll tell you you know if, if you're doing something wrong he'll tell you he'll correct you but he'll correct you in a way that you understand that what you're doing is wrong you know and and i really really uh enjoy that and that is really a hard thing to find nowadays everybody is trying to be oh my i'm not gonna hurt your feelings and i'm gonna say something sugarcoating it to but no He's, you know, he's old school and I appreciate that. And then Raquel is like totally amazing. And when you, when you, when I met her, the, the level of, of, of getting into the company and the level of, of her in and immerse into the company and the tobacco and the process and, and to, to see that duo of, of, of Manolo and Raquel working in, in synergy to the greater good of a cigar. And then everybody from the factory, you know, I, 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 I met him through Zoom at first. And I mean, it was just like, I, I felt like I knew them. You know, it, it was like, wow. Like I just felt attracted to the whole idea of working for them. And that was great. And I loved it. And so in a nutshell, um, I wanted to, I, 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 I knew that I could be a part of this because it was, it was something, it was a family owned, it's a family owned business. Everything is family run. They'll, you know, and I'm a part of the process. Uh, so I'm part of the process for everything. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm in charge of sales, but when it comes to new blends or cigars, I have a say so, which has never happened. And to me, that's really important because they take my opinion and the opinion of others when developing something new. For example, Oktoberfest, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like for our, uh, every year we bring out Oktoberfest like around September. Uh, and we start shipping it out. So I was in a store in, in Missouri, in Springfield, Missouri, and they had these old Oktoberfest uh, Salomon box press, and they were from 2015, I believe. And I grabbed one, and I, I was smoking in the car with a friend of mine, and I'm like, oh, my God, these are so good. Right away, I called Enrique. I was like, Enrique, can we bring these back for Oktoberfest of 2023? And he's like, uh, yeah, I don't see why not. I was like, we need to bring these back as a kind of like a – like a you know event only cigar right you know I, like I said my my main my brain is like like working nonstop and I'm like we should do this and we did it like where where can I do this where you know where when where they take my word and they they'll do it you know our 59th anniversary cigar I was at the factory where where they were showing me the 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 the, the mockups and all that of, of the new box which is beautiful piano black finish I mean amazing right. But we had this little piece of wood inside to divide the cigars because there's only 15 cigars in the box. And I'm looking at it and I'm like a big accessory guy. Like I, if you, everybody follows my Instagram, they'll know I'm a lighter cutter, you know, cigar reds kind of guy. I love all that stuff. And I'm looking at it I'm like, what if we make this little piece of wood a cigar rest? And we put some engraving there to make it like more special. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. And they did it. And when I saw the, the finished product, it's there and it's beautiful. So you know, talk about owning and talk about ownership of, of, of something like that. It's amazing when you are able to do that, to put in your two cents 
and actually people hear it and it develops. And when you see the final product, imagine the love that you're going to have for something even greater because you actually put in the ideas and, 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 and develop it. And this is the, this is the first year that we sold out of the Octoberfest, even before it ships, like it's shipping next week and it's already sold out. Like it's gone. You know, we had such a great uh, amount of success. 50th anniversary, it's almost gone and, and unheard of. You know, we haven't done that in years. So this is a true testament that everybody's working together. I mean, everyone, everybody's putting everything they have on it. You know, nonstop, our brokers, our, our reps, uh, uh, Manolo, Raquel, uh, people in the factory, everybody's putting, and I, I have this I have this saying, and it, 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 some people sometimes don't get it, but I say, amazing people make cigars for amazing people. So our amazing people make cigars for amazing people which is everyone i consider everyone an amazing person you know i'm i'm kind of like you know i I always think about positive and i'm always positive so i always Mm -hmm. think about our amazing cigars go to amazing people why not give it the care and 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 think about what you're going to enjoy so in a nutshell you know i I think you can tell i love working for casada (laughs) no but that you you can and like i said you don't always get that from i mean i've known people like i said i've been in the cigar industry um, since 2010. So I've encountered a wide range of people and you can always tell, you know, people who are basically, you know, in a nice position and they get a nice paycheck and, and that's what they're there for. And then people who are really passionate, you know, about what they're doing and that passion usually comes again from up top, like if the people up top are passionate then it all trickles down. If the people up top are money minded, then everyone else is money minded and you could feel the vibe, you know, yeah. like you definitely feel the, the difference. So I, you know, like I said, Casada has always been a, a very interesting brand to me because as you said, it's like, it's been around for so long, but you don't always hear about it. You know, you don't always see it. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that, the, the, like I said, if you go to the factory, if you go to the field, you kind of see what makes it so special. And what's fun too, is that, you know, for, for me, the people at Casada um, usually, you know, I always say, oh, they've only seen me like once or twice and they don't know who I am. And they know you like, you know, it's like a, a very good family vibe. Like, oh, you're like you, you know, I remember you and and so mm-hmm. on and so forth, which is nice because the, it's, it's nice to have that and it makes you feel like, OK, they, they are paying attention. This isn't just, you know, whatever for them. Oh, yeah, especially Manolo. Manolo will remember. So I have, uh, you know, like I said, I meet a lot of people and I met somebody in, in, in San Francisco who used to be a retailer. He's retired, sold his store, but I met him. And um, he's like, oh, tell Manolo. I say hi, you know, and, and I said, OK, cool. So I was at the factory. I was like, oh, by the way, so and so says hi. And he right turned. And he's like, how he's he's doing. He's in San Francisco, right? He used to own this store and he gave me the whole story. And I'm like, I'm like. Wow, he remembered. I mean, I'm like, damn. And I, so I called him. I called the the gentleman. And I was like, hey, hey. And I told him the story. He's like, oh my god, I can't believe he remembers me. I was like, mm-hmm. F, to the single detail how your store was was where your stuff was located and everything. So I mean, that tells you right there the care, you know, and 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 the care and the passion for it. Yeah, and I think that's so important because you know people want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to be remembered. So. If you can do that, uh, especially in this industry, I think it, it says a lot about your brand and a lot about you personally. So, um, you know, that definitely, like I said, speaks volumes about Casada. Um, Correct. You know, where I, I usually I like to ask people, but I know you're not the brand owner per se, but you can probably speak to this because you meet with them often. You know, where does Casada go from here? Like, wh- what's the, the grand plan for for things like like where like i said where does casada go from here so so you know just a reminder we never we never gone anywhere you know right a little forgotten but we're still we're still there making cigars so the in the grand scheme of things i think that uh we we don't want to be uh world dominating anyone right But, Mm -hmm. but what i like what i really like is that people enjoy our cigars and we are we become a cigar in your cigar rotation where you enjoy cigars and you keep going back to the store and keep buying them and, and enjoying them. So in, in, the, in, 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 in the future, we see 
we see a lot of more placement in, in cigars in the stores. Uh, the retailers who have taken care of us, we, we continue to strive uh, to take care of them. And also the new retailers are giving us opportunity to come into the stores. And that's, that's, that's the challenge. Like, in, you know, like if you talk to anybody who's in the cigar industry, that's the biggest challenge. There's so many cigars out there and there's so great, many great cigars out there that you're fighting for that, for that, uh, for that placement in the humidors. So the, 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 the gram, the, the project and the goal is to be, to make amazing cigars, to make quality cigars, to make cigars that people are going to enjoy. And for us to get again an opportunity to come back into some of the stores that we haven't been there and there that we they forgotten about us to come back in there and remind them how amazing our cigars are so and you know I, i'm a pretty uh, I, you know i am always on the go and i'm always doing things you know like go 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 and i you know the the great thing about you know um Enrique, who's who's my boss at, at the factory, he's like my 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 hey, come down, like you're going because I want to go go go, like and he's like hey, he's always says pasito pasito, like you know, he, you know we, we we you know we're doing baby steps, which which we are, but every step that we take, we're we're doing it in the right direction, and you know feedback from from people, it's always great, and I always hear like hey, you know I went to the store and I found cigars, I found your cigars, and I tried them and they're great. So that's our goal. Our goal is to get people to smoke our cigars, enjoy them, keep coming back for more. And and our purpose is coming out with new cigars, uh, limited some limited edition cigars that you know we have special tobacco that we don't have a lot. You know, tobacco is not forever, and and for them to enjoy them. That new 15 anniversary is coming up. It's an amazing cigar, and I, I and hopefully people will enjoy them. And uh, obviously we're almost sold out. So if you see them, get them because it's a really really special cigar. So that's our main goal, putting cigars in people's mouths to enjoy for as long as we can. Great. Um, usually at this point in the show, I like to kind of wrap things up for this part of the interview with uh, two basic questions. Um, the first of those questions is, do you have a philosophy that you live by? Yes. And it's, it's, it's not, I, I, want, I don't want to take credit for this. It's actually, my dad always to told me this is, we are as good as our word. So, you know, and, and, and I strive to do everything as I, as I say, I'm going to do and, and, and strive for, for, for greatness and strive for good. And, 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 you know, that's, that's my philosophy. You know, you're all, you, the only thing you have is your word. That's it. You know, money comes and goes and everything comes and goes, but your word is, is the one It's a true testament of who you are. So if, if I'm going to sit there and tell you, this is a great cigar, is because I truly believe it is a great cigar. I'm not gonna just try to sell you something. So that's my philosophy, and and and, and that's kind of I've been doing things. And you know, we're human. We we err sometimes, and we make mistakes. But you know, it's not how you make a mistake; it's how you recuperate from that mistake and and you make it good. So that's my philosophy. You know, you strive for greatness. You're gonna you're gonna fall down, get up, and do your best. Um, I want you to complete this sentence, Hector is crazy <laughs> <laughs> i am <laughs> <laughs> you, you you once if you you know people that know me they're like that guy's crazy he's always talking yeah i am i am i'm crazy about cigars i am i am <laughs> well um for those people who are not watching this do you mind telling them what website, what social media they need to follow in order to keep up with uh, Casada Cigars and yourself. So uh, our social, I mean, our website is quesadacigars.com and then uh, Quesada Cigars and in Instagram, uh, I guess Quesada Cigars and Facebook. Um, I, my, my social media is Hector underscore TX Cigars. Uh, so you, you know, you can follow me, follow this, uh, and Raquel, Raquel, Raquel Quesada, Oficial, that's her. That's her Instagram. Um, I think you should follow her than me because you know she's a, she's she's pretty. I'm not. And she has all these crazy crazy outfits. I, I I'm all, you know you know you're always gonna see me. You're always gonna see a cigar with like my shoe or like my lighter. That's basically it. I don't want to put my face on anything. But but you know uh, you can follow us there and 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 you can see our new stuff that's coming out and and then on our website if you go into locations if you're unsure if, if a store is uh, carrying your uh, our cigars 
you can go in there and type in your your zip code and they'll tell you uh, the closest to you is and you can always reach out to me by social media uh, if you're in a place where uh, cigars are not available to you and I'll I'll do my best to get them in that store for you to to enjoy well thank you for coming on and sit tight because we're gonna be filming a couple other things for those of you watching you can go to the YouTube channel or uh, social media and see some of the uh, extra little video content that will come out of this uh, video that Hector and I are getting ready to film. But if you missed any of this interview or you want to see any other of the episodes of Deep Cuts Live, you can see them at youtube.com slash deep cuts live or at deep cuts live.com. And if you're listening to this or you just want to listen to deep cuts on the go, there's about 130 some hours worth of deep cuts for you to listen to at this point. So plenty to keep you busy. Um, you can um, find Deep Cuts on all the different um, podcast platforms like Apple, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. Um, leave a review. I always love to, to see what you all think of the show and, and open to criticism as well. So um, thank you for watching and listening and make it a great day. <laughs>